Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I would like to share with you a very dramatic game played by Bobby Fischer. Fischer is on the black side and his opponent is American chess master James Sherwin. Although Sherwin would earn his international master title a year later in 1958. This game was played in 1957 at Lock Cabin Tournament. But before starting our game, as usual, would like to warm up your brain. Please take a look at this position and try to find mate in 3. It's white to move. I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Back to our main board and now without further ado let's go for our game and see what happened on the board. Sherwin opened up with c4 and Fischer responded with knight f6, d4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, e4, black castles, king's side, f3, d6. We have the king's Indian defense where white has adopted the Zemish variation. A very aggressive line where white is usually castling queen's side and is launching a devastating attack on the king's side. Here we have bishop e3, e5, d5, knight h5. Yes, Fischer is opening up the f pawn's path and is preparing f5. Meanwhile, we have Queen d2 and after f5 we have e takes f5, g takes f5 and in here Sherwin castled queen side and now let's see how will Black organize his game. This time Fischer played a6 as white castled queen side, this time Fischer wants to go for b5 breakthrough. Bishop d3, knight d7, knight e2, knight c5, bishop c2 and b5. The idea is that now if c takes b5 then a takes b5 and if knight takes b5 then the knight is no longer protecting the pawn on a2 and black can win it. But in our game after b5 we have knight g3 which is a bit strange looking move. Instead of knight g3 it was better to go for this aggressive looking g4 move. And by sacrificing a pawn actually white is managing to open up the g file and white has a strong compensation. This can allow white to organize a dangerous attack. But in our game we have knight g3 and knight f4. After which Sherwin again moved back his knight on e2 of course. This was a very dubious decision first play knight g3 and then knight e2. White is losing a precious time meanwhile black proceeds with his attack b4. By the way, instead of b4, capturing on g2 is not a good idea because of this bishop g5 move. If queen e8, then rook g1. That's why after knight e2, we have b4, knight a4. Here we have the exchange of knights on e2 square, after which Fischer also went for the exchange of second pair of knights. Bishop d7, bishop c2, and a5. Yes, black proceeds with his pawn storm. We have c5, which is a strange decision and is somewhat making white's queen side vulnerable. a4, c6, and this time we have b3. a takes b3, a takes b3. By sacrificing a pawn, Fischer managed to open up the b file, and this time we have queen b8. First, Fischer is counterattacking white's light squared bishop, and then we have bishop e8. h4, f4, bishop f2, and bishop g6. Fischer is placing his bishop on a very active diagonal, although stopping the h pawn's further advancement with bishop h5 was stronger, but in our game we have bishop g6, now comes h5, bishop f5, h6, yes, this white pawn managed to harass black bishops, and then we have king d2, yes, already the white king is thinking about his safety and is leaving his castle, here we have rook a5, and after rook a1, Fischer played rook b5, this is a start of a brilliant combination and this move actually is a very provocative one. And after bishop a7 it turns out that yes, black should go for a queen sacrifice otherwise black can lose his rook and Fischer went for it. Rook takes b3 is on the board, bishop takes b8 
we first see rook takes b2 check and after king c1 we have rook takes b8 but now let's see where is black's compensation actually black has a huge advantage although black has two bishops against the queen but white king is vulnerable and white pieces are not cooperating together here we have rook d1 and bishop h4 although this is not the strongest continuation playing rook b4 was stronger this is like forcing white to give away his queen. Now if queen a6 then rook c2 checkmate is coming. That's why white should keep his queen on the c file after which black can play rook b3. If queen e1 then rook c4 check is coming and white king is getting checkmated. That's why at this point after rook b3 white should give away his queen but the endgame is hopeless for white. Black is winning. If white tried to go after the pawn on c7 then this time rook b1 check is coming and after announcing several checks suddenly this dark squared bishop is joining the attack and then e3 is coming. If rook takes c7 then rook d2 and black is winning. Let's go back in our game after rook d1 we have bishop h4 and rook a2 after which Fischer played rook to b4. Well, it was better to play rook 8 b4. And again, white is forced to give away his queen. Otherwise, if move like queen a6, then rook b1 check is coming, and then rook d4. But like he's winning. But after rook a2, Fischer played rook to b4. Here we have queen a6 and rook 8 b5. Another mistake by Fischer. Instead of rook 8 b5, it was better first to play rook b3. Free this b4 square for the second rook and then both rooks cooperating together can create too many problems for white king. Actually black needs this rook on the third rank but in our game we have rook 8 b5. Here comes king d2, rook takes d5 check and king e2 which steps into a checkmate in three moves. In here it was better to play king c3. If you win the rook on d1 then king takes b4 it's white to us advantage but in here Sherwin played king e2 and Fisher missed mate in three. Can you find the mating line for black? Ready? Actually this simple rook sacrifice on e4 is winning. If f takes e4 then bishop g4 check is coming followed by rook takes d1 checkmate. But after king e2 Fisher missed his chance captured on d1 which is losing. I'm sure that Fisher was in a serious time trouble that's why he missed that mating line. King takes d1 was played with rook d4 check. King e2, bishop d3 check and after queen takes d3, Fischer resigned because the endgame is hopeless. White is winning. White will also win the pawn on c7 and it's over. That's why after this queen takes d3 move, Fischer resigned. Well, all in all the game I find very instructive. Fischer's attack on the queen side was perfect. And then that queen sacrifice was simply epic, but straight after the queen sacrifice, Fisher started making inaccurate moves. I am sure already from that point he was in a time trouble. And finally, he also missed the mating line in three and lost the game. All in all, I like this game very much, played by 14 year old Bobby Fisher, and I hope that you enjoyed it greatly. Thanks for watching, for more games consider subscribing to my channel, also press the bell button to get notified about new uploads, I will see you in my next video, take care.